today to introduce our pastor. Um, this is like personal for me. Like I know y'all pastor and everything, but it's real personal for me. He really helps me. He helps me. He helps me. He doesn't know that he really makes a difference in my family's life. And I'm just so grateful to be a leader underneath you, pastor, and you make a difference in our lives. And I know that you have made a difference in other people's lives here in the church. Even the people that have gone on, I want you to know that you did plant a seed. That's right. And know that. That's don't, right. Don't be discouraged. Yeah. You know, don't be like, oh, no, you did something. And That's right. Continue mm -hmm. to do something. Mm -hmm. Right here in this hood, on this corner, <coughs> you're making a difference. Mm -hmm. So that lady right here to say what she said today, when she used the letter, you know, only at Christmas. Right, right. Not that it was wrong. You know, right. we knew what she was talking about. Right. There was no frown. She's still sitting here. Right, right, you know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. So you're making a difference, Pastor, in our economy. Right, right. You know, so if that's like form of fashion, you're coming straight from the heart. Pastor, yeah. you make a difference in my life. Right, and I just thank you for being my pastor. Thank you. So this is the choir. After the choir sing and all the rest, you will hear from my pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I think I mentioned a few weeks ago that you could be yourself here at Christian Union Church without being judged. And that's the main thing. Try not to judge for me. It wasn't but five minutes ago, you were right there. That's right. And if you weren't there five minutes ago, you'll be there five minutes from now. Right.
praise the Lord. You know, we need to know that the Lord is blessing you right now. You got a pain in the foot, you need to thank God for a foot. We're going to bless you with a foot. Go down there to the amputee parlor and see folk who wish they had a pain in the foot. <laughs> they already know they had an amputee parlor. <laughs> yeah, you, you lose a limb. You'll find out where the amputee parlor is. Amen. That's where they fit you up for a prosthetic. Did I say that right? Amen. So next time you get a pain in the foot or a pain in the arm or your shoulder hurt, you need to say, hallelujah. And you need to run into the wall. Kick a pew. Kick a pew. You got a leg or an arm that hurts. Some folks wish they had a leg or an arm to hurt. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Hey, hey, my sister, you got your car parked outside? No. Oh. Oh man, I love going outside and see her car parked on the pavement. I think that's the funniest thing, boy. I die laughing when I go outside. I say, go ahead, sis. She drove that car to church. That's right. That's right. Park it in the best of you if you can. Amen. Might slip on the way in the church. Drive it on up in here in case you fall on the step coming in. Amen. I'm by any means necessary. Get here, child. Amen. Some folks wish they had a car and parked park on the curb. I'd be jealous. I had to walk from the street. Amen. <laughs> yeah, Here's what you got. So, if you have your Bible, that's right, she ain't got to find no parking spot. Can you meet me in the book of John, New International Version, John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. New International Version. Man, I'm so glad I'm saved. I don't know what to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's hard. It's hard. Save. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. The rest of them. <laughs> when you get there, say amen. Amen. We're at John chapter 6, starting in verse 1 down to Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Amen. Philip answered him, eight months wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Mm. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. And the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, Jesus said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is come into the world. 
Jesus knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. May the Lord richly bless the reading, Harry, and I know he's already started to bless the understanding of his word as we look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you again for all the ways you've blessed us. Lord, you blessed us crazy. Lord, we know we don't deserve what you've done for us. Lord, we can't even begin to fathom all the sins that we have committed, not even realizing, let alone the ones that we know we do. And Lord, you still love us as if we had never, ever, ever, ever sinned. And that's amazing. Lord, we don't know anybody on the planet, not even our mother, they would treat us as if we've never, ever, ever, ever seen. So thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, I would like to use as a theme the true value of a kid's meal. The true value of a kid's meal. Many significant events stand out in chapter 6. Chapter 6 is the longest chapter in John's gospel. This feeding of the multitude must be important. Now listen to this, everybody. Since this is the only miracle besides Christ's resurrection that is talked about and recorded in all four Gospels. It's the only miracle, besides the resurrection, that is recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The people thought that Jesus was going to usher in a utopian kingdom, including free meals and no work. Oh, y'all are crazy. But Jesus knew their hearts and wanted to only, watch this, not only to give them physical sustenance, but spiritual sustenance as well. He knew that they only wanted to use him. No one wanted to serve him, but everyone wanted something from him. Oh, I'm touching hearts right now. Mothers in this place know what I'm talking about. Because, watch this, they see the same actions at home with the kids. And even in some cases, with the husband. Somebody say, he ain't lying so far. Everyone comes to see what they can get from you, and no one wants to serve you. And somehow. One night I came home from a funeral. It was a funeral that I had officiated, and I was home. But due to a miscommunication between the wife and I, she had not prepared a dinner for me. And I was hoping that she had. Now, Denise, that's first lady, being faithful and benevolent, she went into the refrigerator. And she pulled out this very small styrofoam cup. Inside it was a spoonful of chicken salad. Y'all got that. <laughs> I don't even know why she saved it. It was a spoonful. I would have thrown that out. It was a spoonful of chicken salad. The next thing I know, I was eating a chicken salad sandwich with lettuce and cherry tomatoes. Onions, pickles, oregano, mayonnaise on a toasted oat nut slice of bread with a side of olives, fresh Lay's home fried potatoes, chips, and Lipton ra raspberry iced tea. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that in the right hands, little becomes much. Yeah, lift, lift and rise. 
Sometime after this, Jesus crossed, I'm in verse 1, I'm going to write what you hear it up, crossed to the far side of the sea of Galilee, that is the sea of Tiberias. Now just so you'll know, Herod the king named this sea after one of the kings. Are you with me here? Tiberias. It was really the sea of Galilee, but Herod nicknamed it the sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous sign that he performed on the sick. That's what the scripture says. Now, I, 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 am, I am of this, I am of this belief. Um, I don't care what drew you to Jesus. I don't care what, you know, some guy, Mike, where's my, where's my grand? He, he came to Jesus because he liked the women that was in the church at the time. And he come up in here and he's searching and all that stuff. And guess what? He messed around and messed around, messed around. And he, he messed around, he, he messed around and got saved. Are you with me? Period. So, you know, with, with, with that Malcolm X, by any means necessary, is appropriate as far as I'm I don't care why you came. I don't care if you came like I came. I came because, look, I, I, look, this high I've been having here ain't been working. You with me, family? It didn't work. This 18-year-old high, 18 years, a high wasn't working. And I joined, you know, I was in the program, AA, NA, CA, all that kind of stuff. Cocaine Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, GA, Gamblers Anonymous. I was in all that. And now they talk about this born again program. I want to join. Y'all praying with me? I don't care why you came to Jesus. I came to Jesus to get off them. I get, I get, I get my sister here, uh, Sister Butterfly, to tell them what kind of. Get, 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 get that. Y'all are praying See, if I was a deacon right there, I would cuss. I said that to my, I got a deacon friend. I, I, I got a deacon friend. I got a deacon friend. And he said something the other day. And I said, well, that's, that's bad sacrilege. He said, what's that mean, man? I said, well, if I was a deacon. He's a deacon, right? He said, so does that mean I can say it? And he said, are you with me? Here? The point I'm trying to bring out is that when you come to Jesus, I don't care why you came. You might have come because he healed you or because you wanted to be healed or whatever. But what I do care is after you do meet him, now what you going to do with that? Now what you going to do with that? Are you going to be here? Watch this, mine. Are you going to be here to make sure that the church doors are open so that somebody can come in after you? There you go. Yes. Just to join the choir? Just to meet women, just to meet men, just to get off drugs, just to get some money, whatever reason. Are you going to keep the place open so that they can come in for whatever reason they got to come in for? That's the problem I got. I don't have a problem with why you came. I want to know what you're doing with what you did, what you got, when you came. Does that make sense? Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down. Watch this. With his disciples. Now, what I like about this is Jesus knows how to use what he has. Guess what he didn't have? He didn't have a pulpit. So what did he do? Y'all with me? This is what Jesus did. The Bible said he went up on the mountain and sat down. See, so so stop looking around at what you don't have. Stop it, man. Y'all need to cut that out, man. Y'all always talking about what you read and got nothing. But look at what you do. There's a pulpit right there. Go up on that mountain and sit your behind down. That's what he did. And not only did he do that, but I'm going to tell you about the pews, too. We're going to come to the pews, too. Here we go. He said, use what you got. So he went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish, on the verse 4, Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Now, Scripture says in verse 6 that he only asked him to test him because he already had in mind what he was going to do. Two things you need to know. The reason why he asked Philip out of all the rest of them is because Philip was from that neighborhood. And Philip would have more concern about Mama Joe. Papa Snurf, you with me here? 
Sister Sean, Shelly, Sam, you hear me? Because he knows some of these people. So he asked the one who would be deeply compassionated. Oh, yeah, I like that. I just made that. I mean, look that up, see if it's in there. Um, deeply compassionated. Uh, look it up, look it up, see if it's in there. But anyway, watch this. So, so he, 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 called, he called the person who's from the neighborhood to ask him, what are we going to do with all these people? You see Pookie sitting out there, Boo Janella Jones, Shanae Man again. You with me here? Ask him. But not only that, we here we got to know too. There's oftentimes my, my, my nephew knows about this. I, I try to be like this sometimes. Oftentimes he asks questions that he already knows the answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might say to you, so uh, Tammy, how'd the deaconess meeting go, son? Saturday. Y'all praying with me? I'm waiting for time to say, oh, we had good time, Pastor. No, you didn't. Hey, wasn't even no deacon this meeting. Y'all, y'all, y'all pray with me. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you ask a question that you already know the answer to. Amen. Amen. Somebody ain't smart. <laughs> it says here, yeah, he already, he only did this to test him. See it right here. He only did, not tempt. Don't, don't get tempted, Mr. Pastor. He only did this to test Tammy, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Amen. You see that? You see that? You see that? He also knew that Philip was from Bethsaida, like I already shared with you, and that he would be more concerned than everybody else. Now, this brings me to my points. I have four points. Yeah, I see the pessimistic. I see the optimistic. I see the miracleistic. Look that up. And I see the materialistic. Now, I want to I drop this on you. The optimistic has a slash because it's optimistic slash questionistic. So it's optimistic, but it's also questionistic. Let's start with pessimistic in verse 7. Philip answered him pessimistically, saying, eight months' wages would not be enough bread for each of these people to even have a bite. Now, my suggestion to you, Felicia, is you got to be careful about hanging around pessimistic people. Amen. Amen. Can I help you, Billy Dog? You know why? Because your dreams will never get off the ground. Amen. I got I got a couple friends. Love them, like them, care for them. But don't tell them nothing until you're already done. You know, I tell you, you tell us, you know, you, you don't ask a question you already know. You say, um, yo, Ben, how would you like one of them uh, wooden plank floors? Oh, man, I don't like them, man. Them floors warped, man. You get water in them, be on the I'm doing something. Well, yeah, well, Ben, I already did it, and it turned out nice. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You with me here? You don't, you don't, because some folks are just so pessimistic, they'll kill your dreams. Some people are just dream killers. And me being a dreamer, <laughs> you just be throwing water on my fire by the bucket load. I always got something to dream about. God has built me in a way that I can see beyond. I can see the potential of, of certain things. You see a wall, I see a neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see a, you see a bike, I see a, a motorized. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so, so be careful about hanging around pessimistic people. He ain't gonna like you. He got all them churn. He don't like churn. I know him before he didn't like churn. So dropped the girl in the middle of a date because she found out she had churn. You hear me here? In the meantime, well, I'm glad you told me because we've been married for three years. We doing all right. He brought his kids over, meet my kids. We all, we all happy up. We, we blended up in here. You with me here? So be careful about sharing stuff with pessimistic people. Did I help you with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Not only do you see the pessimistic, but let's take a look at the optimistic, questionistic. Optimistic, questionistic. It's right here. See, tell me if it's not right here. Tell me if it ain't here. Watch it. In verse 8. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Now stop right there. I want you to know who Andrew is. Andrew is the one who led Peter to Christ. 
Andrew was saved before Peter. Andrew is always known for bringing people to the Lord. That's what he did. But watch this. But somehow or another, his brother, Peter, became more famous than him. Because when you hear about Andrew, they always call him Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Isn't that something? I led that nigga. He wouldn't be. <laughs> you know, uh, hey, ain't you Simon? Ain't you Simon Peter's brother? Yeah, but if I'm his old. I, I, I did. You wouldn't be talking about Simon if it wasn't for. Isn't that funny how stuff can get turned around? So watch this. So watch this. He, another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. And here's the optimistic part of his questionistic statement. Optimistic part is here. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. That's optimistic. You got 5,000 people sitting here, and you're going to tell me that there's somebody here with five barley loaves and two <coughs> small fish. That's pretty optimistic. What do you, what do you say? When you say, but but then he goes, but how far will they go among so many? That's when you start to question. Yeah. And see, the problem with that is sometimes you can have something in your mind that you'd like to do that you think can happen, and all you need is somebody around saying, well, how far is that going to go? What you going to do with $50? Right, right. Well, I'm going to take it down here and put it on the lot. No, I'm only messing with you. I'm only I'm only teasing. I'm only teasing. Don't be gambling. Don't be gambling. But but well, I'm 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 gonna take that fifty dollars and I'm gonna buy me I'm gonna buy me uh, fifty dollars worth of goods and I'm gonna sell them goods and make me a hundred dollars. That's what I'm gonna do with that fifty dollars. Remember remember with the woman with the oil when 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 the the, the, the prophet uh, told her pay all your bills. She only had a little bit of oil and he turned it into a bunch of bunch of bunch of other oil and he said watch this pay all your bills and you and your your sons can live off the rest. You remember that? Now watch this. I don't believe it was enough oil in that room to live off of for the rest of their life. Women? Well, I believe it was enough oil left in that room to go into the oil business. Tammy, how much did it cost for you to start your business when you first started? What, 100, 200, 300, 500 at the most? At the most, right? Top to start. But then later, five, ten years later, there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars that have been made off that little, what you, what, so, you, so, so if Maya was to say, Mom, what you going to do with a business with, with $300? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Kill your dream. You dare your dream shot. Now, 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 ten years later, hundreds of thousands of dollars later, you could have been there, but you got somebody saying, well, you got five hundred dollars, man. That's really good. But, but but how far is that gonna go in business? So it's 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 optimistic, but questionistic. And sometimes I'm gonna tell you, depending on your spirit, minister guest, depending on you, a question can knock the set, knock the wind out of your sail. A question, mom. Why are you going down there to that job? And you start thinking. You go to work. You go to work, you start looking around. Why am I here? Because <laughs> somebody put a question in your mind. You know what I mean? At the end of the year, you look at your W-2, say $110,000, right? Now you know why you were here. But, but your boy say, Mom, why you going down there and have to look after them people? You know what I mean? I'm telling you now. I'm telling you the truth. I'm helping you with some nice things here. Please, please take it in because... Look, I've been here, like my mom said, and stayed overnight. <laughs> Y'all ain't playing with me. I've been here, man. I see how this thing goes. Okay. And I got not only pastoral experience, but I got, I got 57 of my own years of, of some stuff. S-T-H, S-H-T-U-F-F that I've been through. Y'all with me here? So watch this. So now, so now we, got, we got the optimistic, questionistic, where he's asking how much Will this go? How far will this go? And that boy, Andrew, was almost there. He bought the fish and the barley loaves and the fish. And, and, and that was a good thing when you're looking at 5,000 people. 5,000 men, by the way. 5,000 men. 5,000 men. 5,000 men. Probably around 15,000 people. 
You got men, women, and children. It just counting the men, 5,000 men. Make a note of that, 5,000 men. So that was pretty, that was pretty, that was pretty positive, pretty optimistic. Say, say, he's right about that. Now, then we're going to move to, from the optimistic to the miracleistic. Here's Jesus in verse 10. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. A, a negative person would say, where are they going to sit? But Jesus took what he had and made the best out of it. So Jesus took what he had and made pews for 15,000 people. Have the people sit down. It looks like nothing, but I see 15,000 pews. Somebody said he ain't wrong yet. <clears throat> then he had them sit down, about 5,000 of them. The, I mean, verse 11. Then Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He didn't say, here's a bite. Say, how many, how many, how many loaves you want? Uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm 250, 610. You know, I need these three loaves. A couple of fish. Y'all with me? As much as they want. That's what the scripture said. And he did the same with the fish. Now, here's what you got to understand. Heavenly math means you multiply by divide. See, look, you got $100, you can turn that $100 into a whole lot more by dividing it up. You give her 10, give her 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Now, she know where to take $10 and get 22 pounds of greens. $10. You take $10, you're going to get greens as a side dish with your chicken. <laughs> Say he ain't lying. Over here, girlfriend, she know where the potato farm is. She run down there and get a potato farmer, $5. She can't even carry the potatoes or so many. You in here? That's only $15. They got, we got greens and we got potatoes for 100 people. With fifteen mm -hmm. you multiply by divide. That's heavenly man, and you just carry that around the room. Somebody know where to get the ribs? We get the ribs. <laughs> Somebody know where to get wings for thirty pounds for twenty-two dollars? Am I right about it? Two people get together, put their ten ten together, talk the man down from twenty-two to twenty. They went out of there with thirty pounds of wings. Am I right about it? Come on, somebody. You multiply by dividing. That's heavenly man. God has a different type of man. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. It's another thing. It's not wasted. Not wasted. Leftovers. We're raised on. Now you so you so you you got it now. You got it now. You know, you know. You don't mind, you ain't no leftovers. Yeah, well, you ain't appreciate it. <laughs> you ain't hungry. Either that or you just put just enough on your plate. Because <laughs> where I come from, still come from, the next day that food tastes better than it did the first day. That's right. That's right. Six next day we marinated overnight. Yep. Six summer marinated. We got some chicken home right now, don't we need? We got some chicken home right now that we ate yesterday. I can't wait to see that chicken again. Me and that chicken gonna have a rendezvous. <laughs> Amen. Hey, look, wait, wait, oh, I said, I'm like uh, uh, Bernie Mac. When I see that chicken, it's gonna be a misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> don't waste nothing. Sir. Don't waste nothing. When you when you see when you see people going in the refrigerator and throwing stuff out, somebody made a mistake. <laughs> Maybe mama cooked too much that day. Wednesday, we still still supposed to be eating Sunday if it's still there. We don't start cooking until the last meal is gone. And we can afford to. We can afford to. But we know that. So notice for just from this here, let nothing be wasted. Let nothing be wasted. Now watch this. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets. I like that. With the pieces 
of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Now, the 12 baskets. What's that? What, what, what do you think, Mr. Gibbs? 12 baskets. 12 baskets. I'm just thinking each disciple had a doggy bag. <laughs> Why 12 baskets? Why 12? And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Here, here you go. They get broke off like you do with the clothes. Stay with yeah. me. Stay with me. They get broke off. They get broke off for serving. Yeah. The Bible says he gave it to the disciples to distribute, right? Yeah. So they work in the thing. Right. And I don't believe in us mothering the ox that trends out the corn. I tell Dinah all the time, Dinah, you ought to get the top of the line off of the top of the top of the globe. Now, she don't do that, but she should. You follow what I'm saying? Don't muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn. You follow what I'm saying? Now, she doesn't do that because the reason why I know because I still see the beautiful stuff still there. But the point is, she shouldn't feel embarrassed or, or second thoughts about, hey, 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 this thing right here. Hey, hey, hey. This joint right here. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, look at it. Look, look. How I look? How I look? Y'all like this? Oh, okay, well, well, well maybe, maybe, maybe you might, maybe you might like it. Maybe you might like, maybe you like, maybe you might like it if I wore it like this here. How I look? Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Da, da, da. Come on, man. You're supposed to get broke off from the stuff. Amen. Amen. I believe one. I believe them disciples should took home a basket. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. They should have took it. They should have got a basket. So even if they don't, well, that's a suggestion I'm making, God, that uh, you break them off next time. There. But here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now here's what I like. Here's something else I noticed. Now watch this. So they gathered them, filled twelve baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who were eaten. I didn't see no fish left over, though. <laughs> well, it said five, it said 12 baskets of bread. I think, I think it was some brethren and sisters up in that piece there. They ain't really back no fish. They might have like, yeah, well, that fish is good. Yeah, I like that fish. That fish is mine. Right. Yeah, man. That fish is all right. They get home, they smell like cod. <laughs> but guess what? Are you with me? I, I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm giving up the bread, but that fish, I'm definitely going to get me. The cycle ain't going to see the daylight on none of this stuff here. So here we go, here we go. So here we go. Not only see the miracleistic, but let's take a look at the materialist. After the people saw the miraculous signs Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is come into the world. People will get really excited when they see something being given or done. The more you give, the more excited they get. The problem with that is they don't last because they came to give. And when you run out of give, they start to go. Mm -hmm. Where are all my friends? That's right. That's right. Am I right about it? Yes, ma'am. Amen. They will go once the once the giving, once the once you run out of come on now. Yeah, yeah. You resources. might as well say it now. Come uh -huh. on. You run out of scholarships. Come on, somebody. Come on now. Where where are all the scholarshippers? Hey, but a couple of them here now. You with me here? We got Maya, we got Morgan, we got a few others, a couple others, but not for real, for real. You follow what I'm saying? Why? Because they came for what was given. Yeah. Amen. The interest, well, let me put it to you like this. The interest kind of waned when you weren't able to continue to disperse. When you ran out of barley loaves and fish. So he ain't lying. It wanes. It takes a very spiritual person to still stay when it's their turn to give. Uh, can I help y'all? Can I help y'all? Can I help you? Born and raised. Born and raised on public assistance. Amen. Born and raised on public assistance. Born and raised. I got 15 years old. I started working. When I started working, they cut my mom's money. Really? They said, well, you got this money coming in. He don't have to break you off. I'm 15 years old. They telling me I gotta get mommy something. I gotta kick up. Y'all with me? 
It's just the mafia. So anyway, so anyway, so anyway, so anyway, watch this. So now once I get really rolling, I'm running on all 12 cylinders. I'm rocking, right? I'm saying, why do you got to get money out of my taxes all the time to these people who don't want to work? I'm just being honest with you. I'm just, can I, can we talk straight, right? I want to know why the city of Philadelphia is taking all this money out and the state of Philadelphia, state of Pennsylvania, is taking all this money out to, to help poke it. I'm looking at you. I see you can work. Yes, sir. I, I, you out here with me. Me and you out partying last night. You were spending state money on alcohol and bought some weed with it. Now I'm upset because now it's my turn again. Now you know what my argument was, Tammy? It wasn't my decision to be on public assistance. That ain't my fault. You see what I'm saying? But the point is, it takes a very spiritual person to flip it around and say, okay, I benefited from such and such and such. And now it's time for me to, 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 to pay back. Give back. What's that thing? Pay for it. Am I right about it? Yeah, I'm just being real with y'all. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just being real with you. Can I tell you another story? Harry Yatesy. I don't know if he's still alive. Harry Yatesy was the president, vice president of the Pilgrim Insurance Company when I worked there. And he came out to work with me when I was selling like insurance door to door. And um, we would knock on Miss Susie's house. And, and Miss Susie was on public assistance. And Harry Yatesy, 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 right? Uh, they said, uh, Miss Susie's on vacation. <laughs> and Harry Yancey said to me, once we left the house, vacation from what? <laughs> Y'all ain't praying with me. You got to read between the lines. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, you, you know, you get those kinds of things, you know, when it's your turn to pay up. So material, materialistic, watch this, we're still there. They saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, and they sure, surely this is the prophet who is coming to the world. Verse 15, I'm out here. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. He went, watch this, incognito. Sometimes you got to go incognito, son. You can't be all bold with your stuff. Sometimes even the Lord had to get incognito. Yeah. In closing, I'd like to say that some of us are hanging around Jesus for the wrong reason. Yeah. Some of us are hanging around Jesus because he can do something for us instead of what he has already done for us. Wouldn't it be nice if we started hanging around Jesus to learn more about him so that we could bring more people to hang around him? A kid's meal in the hands of Jesus can feed 5,000 men plus women and children. If all you have is a kid's meal, bring it to Jesus and watch him multiply. Amen. Let's stop concerning ourselves with what we don't have and bring to Jesus what we do have. Can you sing? Bring it to Jesus. Can you lead? Bring it to Jesus. Can you direct? Bring it to Jesus. Can you play? Bring it to Jesus. Can you dance, Maya? Bring it to Jesus. Can you count, Marquita? Bring it to Jesus. Can you administrate, Yvonne? Bring it to Jesus. Can you ush, Donna? Bring it to Jesus. I call it Don Bunny. Bring it to Jesus. Can you deep? Can you teach? Can you preach? Can you plumb? Can you build? Can you cart? Can you tool? Can you clean? Can you cook? Bring it to Jesus. Whatever it is that you have, bring it to Jesus. Let's stop hanging around Jesus for a free meal or what he can do for us. John Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you. It's what you can do for your country. Let's start hanging around Jesus for the right reason. Watch this. We always want to make matters or take matters into our own hands. The reason why things are so out of sort is we do not place things in the right hand. Yes. We've got our faith in the hands of our abilities, of our jobs, of our education, of our connections, of our business, of our prowess, of our proprieties, of our presidents, of our money, of our status, of our swagger, of our good looks, of our bodies, of our hair, of our clothes, or the list is just endless. Yes. 
We put the future in the hands of clothing designers, actors, actresses, movie stars, singers, rappers, athletes, celebrities, and politicians. We put our faith in the wrong hands. Think about it. A basketball in my hand worth $39.95, but in the hands of Stephen Curry, it's worth $51 million a year. A golf club in my hand. It's, it's worth beating a burglar over the head with it when he breaks into my house. Am I right about it? But in the hands of Tiger Woods, it's enough money to feed, feed a small country for a year. A, watch this, a tennis racket in my hand is just good enough to swat flies with. But in the hands of King Richard's daughters, uh, <laughs> you can win tournaments all over the world. So yeah, a microphone in my hand is just something to make noise with. But in the hands of Michael Jackson, they put together something, a Heal the World concert that helped AIDS victims all over the world. A button in my hand can only keep my shirt closed. But in the hands of Vladimir Putin, it can use, be used to start a nuclear war. An ink pen in my hand can only help me write a check for the doctor. But in the hands of Barack Obama, he could pass a bill that would get the whole country health care and a Nobel Prize to me. A stack in my hand can only be used to pull Marquita off the stove with. But in the hands of Moses, it can be used to part the Red Sea. A slingshot in my hand can only help me get the squirrels out of my attic. But in the hands of David, he can kill old Goliath, that nasty Philistine. A little boy from South Philly in my hand is a watch this, will drop out of school and become an alcohol using, drug dealing, woman abusing, dishonest woman. Uh -huh. But in the hands of God, he becomes a drug free, educated father and a husband who just happens to be the pastor of this particular branch of life. Five loaves of bread and two fish in the hands of the disciples and can, watch this, can only feed a little boy. But in the hands of Jesus, it fed 5,000 men plus women and children. An old rusty nail in my hand can be used to hang pictures on the wall. But in the hand of Jesus, I said in the hand of Jesus, it can be used for the redemption of the whole world. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, oh yeah. If all you got is five loaves of bread and two fish, you got enough to perform 5,000 miracles. God bless you.